So, Ramon, the twat in the hat strikes again. Third time lucky. This is the news that's just come out that apparently the a hole, we can't swear on YouTube, can we? Apparently, I get moaned at because I'm foul mouthed, according to some rando on Twitter. <laughs> apparently, you're a right, far right ring uh, racist, but oh well. Yeah, um, well anyway, no, no lies detected, as I said at the time, you know. <laughs> But apparently, this is the news that Becky Seller spends 1.6 billion on uh, fattening himself up, catering for the police departments. So, if any of you are wondering why you can't get a local a new van at the local police station, and uh, if any of you are wondering why the police have all handed in their R5s because they can't afford uh, actual bullets for them, true story. Uh, it's because they, rather than buying bullets, they're buying hamburgers. <laughs> what do you think of that, Ramon? So I think it's. Uh... Yeah, it's it's well, it's it's the ANC way, isn't it? So the minister has spent eight million rand on accommodation since April 2019 till June of this year, while the rest of the police force spent more than three billion rand on accommodation, entertainment, and catering in the same time period. So in three years, that's a that's a lot of billions of rands to spend on things that don't add value to the police whatsoever, and. I mean, what more is there to say? The police don't have any forensic labs. The police don't have any ammunition. The police don't have any guns. The police don't have any training. The police don't have any of the usual things police forces around the world have, including in countries that are far poorer than South Africa. But what they do have is an unlimited credit card at like the hotel Holiday Inn and like McDonald's burgers because that's where all the money is going apparently they don't have increases either by the way salary increases for the past three years but they do have three billion rand to spend on hotels to do what i don't know mistresses <laughs> mistresses yeah <That's laughs> do you remember there was that old trevor noah skit and he was like and he was talking about um how in the u.s like the police there are quite scare- scary they're like this is the swat team come out with your hands up and then he's like but then when you get to South Africa, the South African uh, negotiator comes out and he's like, hey, let's have a chat. I have a cold drink. We'll sit down and we'll have a cold drink. And it's like, it was funny. The skit was funny because it's like, it's very true. But now I'm like, with this news headline, I'm wondering, every time they see a guy steal a stolen TV, are they like, hey, take the TV back. I buy you Streetwise too. Like, and it's on the company credit card, clearly. <laughs> so like, well, what's the purpose of all this food, man? I know we've seen pictures of police officers looking like larger than the world's fattest man. Most of them could try out for the Japanese sumo team, but um, police teams pretty much not not very much. And I think now we at least know where they're getting the money for to uh, to eat these lifestyles. I mean, this is shocking, man. I mean, we, we're no, joking it about it and we're making fun of it, but I mean, like, this is a shitload of money that's meant for public policing. Yeah? So, I mean, they do state, like, the entertainment expenses relates to refreshments in the form of coffee tea and non-alcoholic beverages and biscuits for visitors to all senior management service members in the ministry and mm. uh in terms of accommodation this is for all officials of saps uh namely in higher instances where officials have been accommodated away from their normal place of work due to specific operational needs and deployment requirements so if they have to go to unrest periods or duties or investigating criminal conference. cases and we i mean that's what they say you know they say oh you know detectives have to go there and stay the night bullshit they're going to conferences or they're going to visit their mistresses or they're going back home or they're doing a variety of other things with a company credit card uh, and uh, you know we pay the company credit card our taxes pay the company credit card so I mean, three billion billion with a B rand on on accommodation for police officers. It's just insane, and eight million in particular for Becky Teddy himself. I mean, how much does the average hotel cost? Like on Airbnb, if you spend one thousand two hundred a night, thousand that's thousand, a, thousand rand is, and that's a nice, it's a decent that's, hotel. That's a very decent Ooh. hotel. So if you spend eight million in two and a half years or three years on accommodation, you must be going to. The Mount Nelson, like times five, twice a week or something. I don't know, man. But you know, like we, remember when Becky Seller did all the rounds? He was going around the country, and they were like, "Oh, he's uh going through to stop surfers and all that kind of shit." Oh right, yeah. I guarantee you that guy wasn't sitting there in like really shitty locations. Uh, like I can guarantee you, he was in some nice places. 
Yeah, I remember the time he was on the beach, like chatting to a woman in a bikini or something, telling her to put a mask or some bullshit. <laughs> so, I mean, I've just done the calculations now. So, yes. apparently, if he worked every day of the week, so if he worked every single day of the week for the last three years, which also means no Christmas, no New Year, no nothing. That's him working 365 days. That works out to a cool thousand rand a day. So it's actually worth spot on. It's around a thousand rand a day for a hotel. Well, without any leave Not or bad, anything. Man. So he spends a no day. No leave, no nothing. So he spends 365 days a year in rented accommodation if it costs a thousand rand a day. So obviously it's much more than a thousand rand a day because he doesn't work every single day of his life. Maybe twice a week at best. <laughs> yeah, but that's also him going to a brand new location every single day. And let's not forget, he also gets a, as a parliamentary MP or as a cabinet minister, he also gets an accommodation allowance. So what's really interesting is this is actually over and above his parliamentary allowance. That's so, true. That is quite true. You know, that is quite true. But you know, it's a good leader, are, right? he, he has people around him. They are, uh, you know, VIPs that protect him at all costs. So. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen now, because the news is that the VIPs are threatening to strike. So the VIP protection services, which protect all the ministers and the executive, are saying that, you know, they had enough because they are not being paid overtime, despite the CCMA mm. finding in their favor. And this is the great, what should we call it, the great remark made against Pekinsele when he wants to disarm us of all guns. But meanwhile, he has six or seven security guards with R5s protecting them at all costs. That may be a thing of the past, hopefully, if the strike goes through. Yeah, so I mean, this is, this is typical, again, something that we see a lot in uh, even ESCOM or ISCOM. Um, a lot of the times the, the government has overpowered the unions. The unions obviously are, are a alliance partner. And if you look at it, like a lot of the top brass in the ANC, they all kind of cut their teeth into business i mean they've never actually run a business but they yeah. all cut their teeth into the the real world in a union of some variety like becky you know or sir ramaposa he was originally a f one of the founders of, of namsu the metal mining uh union which is why ultimately he landed up in the mining industry so but a lot of these people start out in unions so obviously because they have a union base where they get their power base from the difficulty comes in and that they they want to overpower these unions which we've seen in ESCOM. The problem is that these unions sometimes have some ridiculous demands. And when their demands are met, then they know, well, our guy's in power. So if we apply enough pressure, maybe we'll get what we want. And so ESCOM's a really good example. They wanted a 13% wage increase and the offer on the table was like 5%, which is well higher than anybody else is getting in private industry. But, you know, such is life. And um, here we have the exact same thing now going on in the policing budget for these parliamentary wankers. They basically, their VIP budgets, uh, these guys are obviously all unionized. I mean, as we've just said, unions are the thing. And the unions want some pretty big demands. But we have actually also in the past covered in a, in a video before around how a lot of the security industry is underpaid. And so I don't imagine that these guys are really that different. So now that they're obviously underpaid, they're not getting bonuses, they're not getting overtime, they're not getting pay rises, like the, in, the, in the same digits that they know their own, should we say their own wards are, the people who they're looking after. Yeah. And I think they know, like this guy just got a 9% pay increase from parliament and here I am, I got a pay increase of like 1% and they're like, this ain't fair. I mean, I'm, I'm protecting you. So they, they're now demanding their, free, their fair share which is obviously in line with the ANC's union agenda. So you kind of did this to yourselves. But I suppose that the crux of all this is this, and that is you made a point during the video about the army. All Timpot dictators know that there's two people you must keep in charge and you must keep them hush and happy at all costs. Number one is your private army, so your security. Number two is the army. Because without those two... Like being a tin pot dictator is a little bit difficult. And in South Africa, our tin pot dictators, our dictator wannabes, our communist overlords who are as thick as two bricks, have neglected the two things that basically protect their ass. Like in the event of them going to war and the country going to civil strife, they need the army, they need their VIP budget. And they've got neither. Yeah. So, but it's worse than 
it's worse than not playing in their fair share. These guys went to the CCMA for overtime. The CCMA agreed with them and the police still didn't pay them the overtime despite the court order from the CCMA. So that's why the unions are feeding that. Well, I mean, even if we are winning in the CCMA, we're still not getting what is owed to us. So it's a, it's a very big difference between saying they want to pay an increase of 20% is it's unreasonable. This is like money owed to them through a court of law yeah. and it's still not being yeah, said. And this is Becky. And I mean, Becky Taylor. These are the people that protect you with their lives, and you treat them like the so pieces of shit. Mm. Like, well, like so, what's you know, the long-term the... thinking here, or, or any thinking? Because I just don't. I just don't see it. Like for me, we but business people, any. Byron. We, we there's two people we always pay on time: the accountant and the lawyer, because we know that they protect us from things, always. Hundred percent. That's what 100%. Becky should think of his VIP protection. You know, in the same way, always. Pay them what they want because they were the ones. They are the ones protecting you, but it appears that is not the case. I think well, there's some ser- there's some serious money there. There's some but serious not, lucre, and these guys have been obviously not quite. That's fake news, Byron. Sorry. So the police budget is 100 billion. The VIP pr- budget is 1.7 billion, but it is, is increased dramatically, whereas the police budget has not. It's actually fallen. So, but per, but pro rata, it's far bigger than the SAPs in terms of VIPs. Eight pro rata people. is far bigger. Yeah, pro rata for what not, for what they get for. But what no, they are getting paid is sure, far bigger. Sure. But and, yet still, and yet still, but then and still, they're not getting paid enough. You're like, mm. but again, you've kind of made this rod for your own back when you've kind of like, you've made everything like unionized, you've made everything overinflated in costs, you've run up everything, you've run everything to the ground so that where you only needed two guys before, you now need 20, like, They've done this to themselves, man, and they've got nobody else left to blame. But with that being said, I suppose the big thing is, and we, I think you've made a comment on this before as well, you know, these these VIP guys, they're claiming they're not getting paid despite having a court order for overtime. But do you remember the court order that told them to pay for the uh, DNA system? There was actually a court order that says you owe this money, you need to pay for it. And then obviously that was the DNA evidence system they turned off. I think yeah. you covered it in a, in a show, didn't you? I did, uh, intensively. And not too sure what happened to that, but we know for a fact that that DNA system... Paid. Yeah, but that DNA system is not on, right? So the, so the ANC talks about rule of law and we're the ones that, you know, uh, you know, care about it. But if the court order goes against the ANC and they don't follow... Nothing seems to happen to them. And once again, it's like absolutely no consequences. The ANC has never had consequences for a large part of its rule of South Africa. And they've taken it to such a degree that now they're actually sabotaging the very people who are protecting them in the first place. And I think that's what happens. It's like like toddlers without any rules. One day they're just going to run and jump in traffic. And that is what's happening right now. I think that analogy that I'm using there is is probably a good one because that via, that whole system that got turned off, like they know that it's not being paid and they know that there's a fundamental f- inability for them to pay for fundamental things that they use. So I've got to ask you, I'm sure you, you know exactly what I mean, but why the hell did they think that they were going to somehow be different and they, they were going to get paid even though they got a court order? Like, Everybody with a brain cell knows. Don't do business with government, man. These guys ain't going to pay you shit. Like, how did they think they were somehow going to be different? Like, oh, I don't know. Stupid. We, we. I mean, we can't look at the the mindset of someone when they do these things. But who knows? The the, the, the real story that Becky said it might not have any VIP protection in the very close future if there's a strike in on this magnitude, and uh, that's yeah. a very very good thing. I think we should. I think, support the workers I think, I think, in this case well you say you say that but it's like you think to yourself ah oh, these guys will be rational they'll be like oh shit life's a little bit dangerous without the vips uh, maybe maybe the firearm stuff is a good thing do you remember last year when we had the july riots and Cyril ramaphosa went on tv and said oh men with guns save the planet you know they saved they saved the country if we hadn't had these guys protecting the communities like it would have been far worse then literally a couple of months later they're like yeah we're gonna take your guns off you and you're like excuse me like you're stupid, yes. so I don't know, man. I yes, don't, don't expect this this clown. Don't expect the twat in the hat to learn anything from this. No, this will mean nothing, man. No, no. I mean, yeah, nothing much more to add except if you want to be a Timbal dictator, just don't follow the ANC because they just don't know. They just don't know how to do it. 
Yeah, which, is, up. which is a great indictment on on the entire organization, just by the way. All right. Mm. Without any further ado, thank you for watching, everyone. See you soon. Cheers. Thanks. Bye.